Big Bang may have been the origins of all the matter and energy in the universe. And shortly after the Big Bang, most of the matter in the universe was protons and electrons that formed hydrogens. But that leaves us with a question. Where did the rest of the elements come from? And that's what we're going to address today. And now for a little background. Elements are atoms. And atoms are made up of three subatomic particles. Protons that have a positive charge, neutrons that have a neutral charge, and electrons that have a negative charge. These three subatomic particles were created in the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. They are the basic fundamental building blocks of the universe. So think about that. At your most fundamental level, you are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And most of the protons and electrons inside of you are over 13.7 billion years old. They have been there since the beginning of time and space itself. Some of the neutrons in you may have been there as, from the beginning as well. However, neutrons are also created in stellar processes. As you can see, we're connected to the cosmos. Now, my next subtitle is, we're connected to the stars. And how exactly are we connected to the stars? Well, before I start talking about our connection to the stars, I want you to realize that there are lots of stars in the universe. And you're probably getting that idea from the number of galaxies. This is an image of our sun, and it's the closest star to us. If you've ever walked on a beach, there's a lot of sand. This is from one of my favorite places in North Florida. There are more stars in the universe than there are sand grains on all the beaches of the world. That's a lot of stars. Now stars are very important to us for several reasons. And not all stars are created the same. Our sun is that small yellow one. Stars can be much smaller and they can last a very long time. And stars can be much larger and they don't last as long at all. In fact, there's our sun next to some of the largest stars we know about. And as you can see that they are enormous compared to our sun. And that's actually very important directly to us. You see, stars have a process called nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion takes place whenever you take the nuclei of atoms, which would be protons and neutrons. But most atoms are hydrogen. And if you heat them up enough, they overcome the repulsive force and they slam into each other and they fuse together and release enormous amounts of energy. So when you see our sun, the energy coming from the sun is coming from the fusion of hydrogen nuclei into helium. Now, a star is a great big ball of gas of hydrogen and helium, and gravity contracts it. Now, once it reaches nuclear fusion, it starts putting out enough energy to stop gravity from taking over and keeping it from collapsing indefinitely. Now, eventually, a star will run out of hydrogen. At that point, it will shed its outer layers and the core will begin to collapse. And as it does so, it heats back up. And over time, at the end of a star's life, these stars will begin to fuse helium and lithium and beryllium and boron. And then importantly for us, things like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sodium, potassium, chlorine. If you noticed, all of those elements are found in us. Now finally, large stars, they'll get to something like iron and nickel. Once stars begin to fuse iron and nickel, they no longer release enough energy to prevent the collapse of the star. And when that happens, something big happens. They go boom. And cataclysmic explosions. Not as big as the Big Bang, but these explosions are enormous. And one occurred about 5 billion years ago that sparked the genesis of our own solar system. And it created all of the elements on Earth that we have in us. So we have hydrogen, that was created during the Big Bang, but all of the carbon in you, all of the nitrogen in you, the oxygen that we breathe, and the calcium, potassium, all of that was created in the star. And when it exploded, then the explosion was so big and so powerful that it also created things like lead, mercury, gold, and silver. This is the Crab Nebula. This is from an explosion that went off about a thousand years ago. And you can see that it's quite colorful and it's spreading all these different elements throughout the galaxy that we've picked up by another second or third generation star. So we are stardust. 
we are the remnants of an exploited star from 5 billion years ago. Now to clarify, the subatomic particles inside of you are 13.7 billion years old, but the elements of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, they're only about 5 billion years ago, created inside of a supernova explosion and inside of a star before it exploded. So shortly after the Big Bang, there were only two elements, hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen is at number one on your top left, and that represents 75% of the visible universe. Helium is about 24%. After the supernova explosions and through stellar processes, all these other elements are created by stars. So there's another connection for us to the universe. Not only do we rely on the Big Bang to give us all the energy and matter that we're gonna ever have, but it was stellar processes, things that take place inside of stars fusion that created all these elements that made life possible. And of course it also made heavy metal possible like Iron Maiden, Metallica, Spinal Tap, and don't ever forget Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath, although they were pretty good with Ronnie James Dio too. So what does it mean? You're stardust, literally. So if you're wearing a gold necklace, just think, that gold is the dust of a star that exploded about 5 billion years ago.